Hi, this is Dr. Bhargava. In this short video, I have several interesting PET CT cases to share with you. Here's our first patient. This patient presented with a complex cystic mass. We can see on this axial image, there is this large mass occupying the abdomen at the level of the kidneys. On the coronal image, we find that this is arising from the pelvis and growing into the abdomen. And here on the sagittal image, we find that this is a very large mass. Um, and it has complex features. This part is cystic, this part is cystic. There is probably a septum here. And there is irregular thickening and enhancement involving the periphery. So such masses are generally ovarian tumors. And they arise from one of the ovaries, left or right. And they grow into the abdomen. And they become they can become very large in size. And so this was diagnosed and resected and it turned out to be a rare ovarian neuroendocrine tumor. And so the patient had surgery and after that they presented with signs and symptoms of uh, tumor recurrence. And so at that time, a dorotate PET CT was performed. So the rotating image on the left shows physiologic distribution of the tracer. We see uptake in the pituitary, salivary glands, uptake in the spleen, more intense in the liver, and excretion from the kidneys into the urinary bladder. We see this focus in the left side of the pelvis. This corresponds to this focus right here on the fused image. This is a metastatic lymph node in the left side of the pelvis. Also, this patient has now developed lung metastasis. So this is a great example of how a dorotate PET CT was helpful in whole body staging in a patient who has a very rare ovarian neuroendocrine tumor. And this is a good article related to that, primary neuroendocrine tumors of the ovary, management and outcomes. Here is our next patient. They have a history of known multiple myeloma. Their prior PET CT, the leftmost rotating image, was reported as negative. There were no hypermetabolic bone lesions or soft tissue lesions. And they presented for a follow-up because based on the blood test, they were suspected of having multiple myeloma recurrence. So let's take a look at that rota rotating image. So on this FDG PET CT study, we find that compared to the prior, there is subtle mild increased uptake in the axial skeleton. And this was biopsied and they found recurrent myeloma in this patient. Here is an image from the CT scan at the level of the skull from the prior study and the current study showing that there are more numerous tiny lytic lesions in the skull from multiple myeloma. So FTG PET CT has a very important role in patients who have multiple myeloma in localizing bone lesions, looking at degree of hypermetabolism, and then localizing soft tissue lesions, which are called plasma cytomas. And this case illustrates how mild uptake can be suggestive of multiple myeloma in such patients. This is a great article on the topic, clinical value of FDG PET CT and multiple myeloma and update. Here's our next patient. This patient was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Their cancer in the prostate was multifocal and a PSMA PET CT was performed for whole body staging. So let's start by looking at the rotating image. So this rotating image shows characteristic physiologic uptake in the lacrimals, salivary glands, uptake in the liver and spleen, and multiple foci in the prostate. There's also a rib focus right here in one of the left-sided ribs. And so the prostate foci are shown, shown here, and the rib focus is shown here, corresponding to this very indeterminate, ill-defined sclerosis, which may represent a bone met, which may represent a prior fracture. Cannot really say based on this um, uh, bone window appearance on this a uh, low dose CT in the region of the chest. So this patient had systemic treatment. And here's a follow-up study where the foci in the prostate have resolved, they have responded to treatment. And the focus in the rib persists. And we see it right here. 
And this tells us that this is not metastatic disease and it is probably a prior fracture which is showing increased uptake of PSMA on PET-CT. And so this has been shown by several case reports and now a few case series also that there can be benign uptake in a rib fracture of PSMA confounding the diagnosis in patients who have prostate cancer. So this is a case report on the same topic, benign traumatic rib fracture, a potential pitfall on gallium-68 prostate-specific membrane antigen PET-CT for prostate cancer. Here's our next patient. This patient was diagnosed with renal cell carcinoma in the left kidney, and they underwent a left-sided nephrectomy. We see the um, follow-up CT images on this patient showing post-surgical changes in the region of the left kidney. And the abnormal findings on these on this CT was this abnormal enhancing soft tissue density focus in the abdomen and another one here in the left lower quadrant. So this patient was then further evaluated with FDG PET CT and here's the rotating image. The rotating image shows physiologic intense uptake in the brain, some excretion from the kidneys into the urinary bladder, some physiologic large bowel activity, and those two tumors that we saw on the CT show increased FDG uptake, also shown here with some misregistration between the CT and PET, and also shown here. So FDG PET is very good for evaluating recurrence in patients who have renal cell carcinomas. You can see here that the intensity of FDG uptake is not great. It's not very intense on these images. And that's one of the reasons why FDG PET-CT is not very good for looking at renal cell carcinomas in the kidneys or at the time of primary diagnosis. Also, because FDG is excreted from the kidneys into the urinary bladder. And that's another reason why FDG PET-CT is not good for primary staging. But once the primary has been removed, FDG PET-CT is very good for looking at recurrent and metastatic disease. We know that there can be soft tissue recurrence. We know that these uh, cancers can metastasize, metastasize to the bones where they lead to lytic bone metastases. And rarely, there can be metastatic disease to the pancreas from prior renal cell carcinomas. Also, lungs is a common place where um, RCC mets are also seen. So this case shows the importance of FDG PET-CT in renal cell carcinoma when we are looking for recurrent or metastatic disease. This is a great article uh, on this topic, the place of FDG PET in renal cell carcinoma, value and limitations. Here's our next patient. Let's start by looking at the rotating image from their FDG PET-CT study. They had a lung nodule, which I'm not showing that was not FDG AVID, uh, but the common or the most important finding that we see here is uptake in the large vessels. So I'm showing it here on this PET image and the fused PET CT image and the ascending and the descending thoracic aorta. There is mural thickening and there is FDG uptake suggesting large vessel vasculitis. And so this is uh, not very common. Uh, let me show you the rotating image again. There is increased uptake in the aorta and its branches proximally. And this is inflammatory uptake in this patient with large vessel vasculitis. This is a good article on the topic, imaging features of FDG PET-CT in different types of systemic vasculitis. This is our next patient. They presented with cognitive decline. We performed a FDG PET-CT of the brain looking for a pattern of dementia. So on this rotating image, we find that they have parietal and temporal hypometabolism, which is seen as this band of hypometabolism extending from superior to inferior on both sides, um, involving the parietal and temporal lobes. And to some extent, the frontal lobes are also involved. So this patient has Alzheimer's disease. It's important to know the areas of parts of the brain that show normal uptake in Alzheimer's disease, which are the subcortical nuclei, the occipital cortex, and the cerebellum. 
So the areas that are involved are in a symmetric fashion, bilateral, parietal, and temporal lobes. And in the later stages, the uh, frontal lobes are involved also. And the image on the right is a single axial image from the same patient showing some hypometabolism in the cingulate cortex. So this patient was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And here is a great recent review article um, on um, pet brain in the diagnosis or brain pet in the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. Here is our next patient. They have a history of lymphoma and they presented for a follow-up study. Let's start by taking a look at their whole body rotating FDG PET CT image. So here we see physiologic uptake in the brain, some uptake in the liver, excretion from the kidneys into the urinary bladder. And then this focus right here is what I want to show you in more detail. It is seen right here. It is a heterogeneous soft tissue density focus. Maybe there is some internal fat in there too. And it does show some ill-defined mild hypermetabolism. So we initially thought, could this be a lymph node with hypermetabolism and may represent a recurrent lymphoma uh, in this patient who has history of lymphoma. The evaluation of their prior studies showed that they had um, a right-sided inguinal hernia, which is shown right here. This is a moderate to large-sized hernia where urinary bladder is herniating through the inguinal canal into the right side of the scrotum. And not too long before this follow-up FDG PET CT study, they had inguinal hernia repair. So this density with focal FDG uptake, which is also shown here in a larger CT image, could be related to hernia repair. And so for hernia repairs, they use proline plug, and they can look like soft tissue density and may show inflammatory FDG uptake on PET scans. And that's exactly what we see here. Some people have called it a plugoma. And this is a great review article titled Multi-Technique Imaging Findings of Proline Plug um, Hernia Repair. Um, and so this patient that we uh, evaluated did not have recurrent Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma. They had uh, inflammatory FDG uptake in the proline hernia repair plug, and it was correctly called um, as inflammatory uptake. Thank you for watching this video. I want to also tell you about two of my on-demand nuclear medicine courses that are available through YouTube. A radioisotope safety course, which is a seven hour long webinar, and 100 cases, 400 cases course, which is a six hour long webinar. Go to my website at www.nuclearmd.com to enroll in those courses. Um, your Gmail ID will be added to YouTube so that you have access to those courses and I will provide you the handouts through Dropbox. Also, I have published two nuclear medicine ebooks. These are available on Apple bookstores. One of them is called Nuclear Medicine Handbook and the other is called Nuclear Medicine Cases and MCQs where there are 100 clinical nuclear medicine cases. Each case has four MCQs. So you will practice 400 MCQs and be ready for the boards, be it ABNM, the American Board of Nuclear Medicine or the American Board of Radiology. Thanks for watching.